Okay. So the next question that we get asked a lot is, well, you know, the technology sounds good, but how can I be confident that the system is fit for purpose? And in order to answer this question, I like to go back to the product life cycle and talk a little bit about um, how traditional sprinklers um, do this. So when Thomas Grinnell, uh, he, his, he started to sort of sell his product at volume. Um, initially, he was the only manufacturer. His system was patented. But what he did is he had it third party assessed. So an independent company came in. They, um, against the test plan, they uh, verified that the system, if it was installed in this particular way, would perform um, adequately. Now, later down the line, his patent ran out, at which point you would have multiple manufacturers who were able to create the product. And um, in the UK, at least, when you have three manufacturers producing the same thing, you can then apply and have a British standard. Now, the purpose of the British standard is to uh, I guess ring fence the technology, the, the the technology or the framework, so that multiple manufacturers, you can say that each one of these manufacturers are producing something of a consistent quality and leverage the independent third party uh, testing. So as a result today, now you have manufacturers, you might be an individual based in Cornwall or a manufacturer in China, as long as they follow this framework, the system um, will perform uh, based on this third-party testing. Now, we often get asked, well, does your system meet the standard? Now, the reason we cannot say we meet the standard is because the standard is prescriptive and involves or explains um, characteristics that are um, uh, are common to the technology. So the prescriptive standard says you've got to use ceiling-mounted nozzles, you've got to have a pump, um, a network of pipes. Because we don't follow that guidelines, we have to we have to find or use other ways to demonstrate um, compliance. So um, we're at a different stage in our product life cycle. Our product is still patented, but what we do do is have it independently third party tested to demonstrate um, compliance. Now, this is a, a an interesting point and um, um, one of the outcomes that we really liked or that we agreed with that came out of the Hackett report was one of the uh, points that, that um, uh, Dame Hackett pointed to was that there was an over-reliance on prescriptive guidance and that not enough emphasis was being placed by the industry on looking at buildings um, on a case-by-case -case basis. And I think this is, we completely agree with this because um, often or sometimes we find that approvers want to sort of tick a box, oh yes, it meets the standard, but not really look at the conditions and ensure that the conditions are appropriate for the installation of that system. One example might be you wouldn't install a um, compliant BS9252 sprinkler in a um, data center, in a in a IT center, um, because it's not appropriate. Um, so um, whenever approvers or people are taking the time to consider if something is fit for purpose, I think it, it, it helps the industry as a whole. Now this view is also shared by um, Sir Ken Knight. Um, now, I'm not sure if this sound actually comes through on the webinar, but I'll put the link into the, the chat. But basically, he is um, explaining um, how he has been involved in standards, but there is a framework that exists for standards, sorry, for products that um, are innovative and different. Uh, the the way to where to find this, well, if you look in the proof document B, it says you can use alternative systems as long as they've been tested and shown to be fit for purpose. So to help approvers answer this question, we follow the same framework that insurance companies use, and they ask three questions. Will it work? Is it designed right? And is it in service? And if you can answer all of these three questions successfully, you can go away confident that the system is going to perform time and time again. So. Um, how do we answer the will it work question? Well, um, this again goes back to this independent third party testing that I talked about. We have tested the, tests, the system against the 
fire performance within the British standard and the fire performance within the water mist standard. So although we cannot say we don't fully meet the British standard, we can test against the relevant um, uh, sections of both of those documents. So we've done that with Exova Warrington and off the back of that testing, we've also had third party assessment of the data. So in, in one case, it was with BSI where they issued a certificate of verification to say that they deemed our system appropriate for applications where traditional systems were used. And similarly, we did this with the local authority building control so it could be pre-approved for use in England, Scotland and Wales. The second part of Will It Work is around our quality management system. So we worked with BRE Global and we're ISO 9001 accredited for the production, the design, manufacture and supply of water mist systems. Um, so we have systems in place to check everything from the, um, the movement of the heads, the density of water mist coming from the nozzles um, to ensure that we can produce products that uh, of a consistent nature and when installed, they will um, work as intended. So the second part to this um, is the, is it designed right question? It's all good and well that it works when it leaves the factory. Um, what about when it reaches, um, it gets in situ? Um, we control this by using only using annually audited and accredited installers. They are, they submit documentation with every um, installer, with every installation. And the backbone to this is our layout tool. So you can see it here. What we've got is um, a software platform where the for every installation our installer can upload a layout. Um, they mark down the areas that require protection that might be throughout uh, in a four story building or um, just in the means of escape in a uh, three story with open plan. They then mark down the location of things like windows and doors. The reason that we do this is because we have preferred positions for our heads. Um, so um, what, I, what do I mean by this? Well, if you can just notice when he drops the spray head down, the spray pattern is initially 90 degrees and then it jumps to 180 degrees when the heads are put into locations where they're less likely to be obstructed. So we, we build this into our model so that we would encourage the placement of the heads to where we're going to get good visibility of the fire. Um, so you can also see there in the larger room, we've got a level of redundancy where the two heads are covering um, the same area. The next thing that the installers would do is mark up the location of the hoses. Um, the system will tell them, um, uh, you know, if they're going over the performance limits, we have a 60 meter uh, hose limit um, when it comes to uh, how the system is deployed. We'll then mark down the location of the alarms and um, the system will then export a layout plan that is part of the package that is sent to building control um, as a commissioning form, um, you know, to say that this is a, uh, uh, a, uh, a, a installation in line with the Plumis guidelines. All right. So then the final part of this is, well, is it in service? Um, the first thing I'd like to point to is if you have a look, if you see the image there, the system, the head is installed above a light switch. And this is um, by design. The reason we install them in and around light switches is we know that people um, are less likely to obstruct the heads or put things nearby if they need to access the light switch. The commissioning procedure for the system involves a full response to a fire. So we don't just pressurize the uh, pipe work. What we do is we put this almost this elephant trunk, as you can see there, over the heads. We test the heat sensor to, see, to show that it's working. And then we trigger the uh, combination alarm with a heat gun or a smoke gun, at which point the pump would run for a minute. They, we check the pressure and um, show that the system will perform and is performing correctly. So uh, um, uh, this, this is kind of a fundamental uh, part of our maintenance procedure and our installers can kind of get in and out um, um, very, very quickly.
The other part to ensuring service is um, trying wherever possible to engage the homeowner. We leave a tag on the individual heads and encourage people to uh, register. Um, we found that the registration rate to be quite good with, with our systems. Um, people um, often intrigued about it and um, we've got a lot of uh, videos and stuff online. Um, and we can give them email updates to say when maintenance, which is consistent with other sprinkler systems of an annual uh, check.